Good evening, Room 207 families. How are you doing today? It's good to be with you. And I'm here with Rossi. And I'm going to read you the next chapter in Crenshaw. And it is chapter 44. And we left off last week uh, with Jackson storming into his room and starting to cry about uh, finding out that they were being evicted, which is they have to move out of their apartment because they haven't paid their rent. And we did some inferring about Jackson's feelings, and we're going to continue this chapter making inferences. And when you make inferences, you think about what the author wants you to, t wants you to know but doesn't tell you in the words, wants you to figure out, and it helps develop empathy for the character and compassion. Okay, and so we left off where he stormed into his room and he was very upset crying and Crenshaw was there on his bed. Okay, and let's go ahead and continue with chapter 44. At four that afternoon, Marisol came to, our, came to the door. She was wearing flip-flops and flowered pajamas. She had the, groucher, the Goucher's dash hounds, Frank and Beans, with her. Did you forget? She asked. You were supposed to meet me. I apologized and I took Frank's, Frank's leash. As we started down the sidewalk, I was surprised to see I was surprised to see Crenshaw walking ahead of us. Not as surprised as I might have been a day or two ago, but still, there he was. gliding along on his hind legs, doing the occasional cartwheel or handstand. I didn't know how to tell Marisol why we were leaving. I'd never told her about our money problems, although she may have guessed by the way I didn't offer her anything to eat when she came over, or by the way my clothes were always a little too small. So I'm going to make an inference here, and I'm going to make him... I'm thinking that Jackson probably feels very self-conscious about his clothes, growing out of his clothes, and his family not being able to purchase new ones for him. Probably a little self-conscious about that. He's aware. And he's thinking what other people are thinking. I wasn't lying exactly. It was more that I felt I left out certain facts and focused on others. I didn't want to do it, of course. I liked facts, and I and so did Marisol. But sometimes facts were just too hard to share. So I want you to infer and think about what he just said. Why are the facts about himself too hard to share? He decided to tell Marisol something about a sick relative about how we had to go to take care of him and how it was an all out, all of a sudden kind of thing. But just as I started to speak, Crenshaw leaned close and whispered in my ear, the truth, Jackson. I squeezed my eyes shut and counted to 10, slowly. 10 seconds seemed like the right amount of time for me to stop being crazy. I opened my eyes, Mary Saul was smiling at me and then I told her everything. I told her about how worried I'd been and how we were hungry sometimes and how afraid I was about what might come next. We walked toward the school playground. Crenshaw strode ahead and rocketed down the tube slide. When he got to the bottom, he looked at me and nodded approvingly. And then, I don't know why, I told Marisol one more fact. I told her about Crenshaw. And that's it. And tomorrow I will read chapter 45. And we're getting down to the last few chapters. Seven, two, oh, that was a long one. Three, four, five. week and a half left. All right, well, you have a good rest of your um, day, and remember, 
when you read, you can make those inferences. And when you make those inferences, you think about what the author wants you to know, but doesn't tell you in the text. And you can make inferences by thinking about how characters feel. Okay. So when you do your independent reading, I want you to remember to do that. All right. Uh, have a good rest of your day, and I will see you again tomorrow.